Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our February 2024 CTSS quiz. I have 10 absolutely terrific cases for you, and without further ado, let's get started. The most likely diagnosis of this incidental mass is, well, what do you see? You see an anterior mediastinal mass, it's water density. Could it be a thymoma? That's a great location, but thymomas are solid. Lymphoma are also solid. Treated lymphoma can become cystic, but there are no other areas of abnormality, for example, in the mediastinum or hilar regions. Teratomas can be cystic, but typically contain some fat, solid components, and calcification. The best diagnosis of a well-defined anterior mediastinal mass, water density, is a thymic cyst. The most likely diagnosis in this patient is, well, what do I see? I first see multiple liver metastases. The pattern of METs can be seen with GI primaries, but multiple other processes as well. Then I look at the patient's colon, and in the region of the splenic flexure, seen both on the axial images as well as on the coronal view, is an infiltrating tumor. It's solid. This is most consistent with a colon cancer, adenocarcinoma of the colon, with liver metastasis. This is not the appearance of infectious colitis, where there's diffuse thickening, not just a short segment, a very marked thickening. It's not the appearance of ischemic colitis, though occasionally ischemic colitis can simulate cancer, particularly in the sequel region, and it's not bulky enough for lymphoma. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with symptoms of gastric outlet obstruction is, now of course, gastric outlet obstruction, you worry about something in the stomach, antral tumor, ulcer disease. You also recognize that things in the duodenum or even proximal jejunum can present as gastric outlet obstruction. What we see here is obstruction of the duodenum by an infiltrating tumor. You could consider duodenal cancer. You could consider lymphoma. I'm not going to be thinking about duodenitis. But then when you look carefully, particularly on the coronal view, there's actually a mass in the head of the pancreas. The mass extends to and involves the duodenum. This is a good example of pancreatic cancer invading the duodenum. The most likely diagnosis of this incidental pancreatic mass is, well, we very nicely see on both the axials and coronal views, approximately a 15 millimeter hypervascular lesion in the head of the pancreas. Now, if the patient had a renal cell carcinoma resected or a partial nephrectomy for renal cell carcinoma, you could consider metastatic renal cell carcinoma, but the kidneys look good and I'm not gonna trick you. It's not an aneurysm. You sometimes can get aneurysms in this region of the GDA simulating a pancreatic mass, but I don't see any feeding vessels. Adenocarcinomas are hypo, not hypervascular. This is the classic appearance of a neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas. In this patient with right lower quadrant pain, the best diagnosis is, well, what you see here is a mass in the pelvis and there's free fluid representing blood. The mass is of partly fat density, which makes you think about a teratoma or a dermoid. Endometriosis can present with solid masses, but not fat. This is not a case of diverticulitis or appendicitis. So this is a patient with right ovarian teratoma with torsion. Now, sometimes you can see the torsed ovary. You can see the lead points to it. Sometimes you can't, especially a case like this, where there's lots of blood present. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, what do I see? I see multiple liver mets, which are vascular, so perhaps a neuroendocrine tumor or renal cell or something like that. But then you see a large cystic mass, rim enhancement, stretching of vessels, solid, in the head of the pancreas. This is not the appearance of lymphoma. First of all, lymphoma liver mets are hypovascular. Melanoma, usually it's hypovascular, but can be hypervascular. But the pancreatic head mass is not what we typically expect to see with metastatic melanoma. A cirrhosist adenoma is a consideration, perhaps, but you don't get liver metastasis. So the best answer is a cystic neuroendocrine tumor of the head of the pancreas 
with liver metastasis. Just a very, very nice example. Remember, metastasis from neuroendocrine tumors are typically vascular. Also remember that not every neuroendocrine tumor is hypervascular. You can see cystic neuroendocrine tumors or just solid neuroendocrine tumors, kind of like this case in part. In this patient with abdominal pain, the most likely diagnosis is, well, what do we see on the MIP and the cinematic rendering? We follow the patient's SMA downward and it's irregular. And then you see all of these unusual branch vessels with slight beating in some of them off the patient's SMA. Now, Ehlers-Danlos can give you aneurysms, but not this beating. IV drug abuse can give you a vasculitis appearance. Tumor infiltration, I don't see a tumor here. The most likely diagnosis is vasculitis. Now, it's a large vessel disease. You could consider things like Ehlers-Danlos. That's a possibility, but there are multiple other possibilities as well. And I think the best diagnosis is just simply vasculitis. This ended up being worked up further and was giant cell arteritis. In this patient with right lower quadrant pain, the most likely diagnosis is, well, what you see in this case is what looks like a small nodule in the cecum and there's high density representing blood. So this is a case of bleeding in the cecum. It's not appendicitis. It's not bulky enough for lymphoma. I don't see diverticuli and right-sided diverticuli and diverticulitis is fairly uncommon, though it does occur. The most likely answer with a nodule and GI bleeding is going to be colon cancer. This was a small colon cancer. In this patient with macroscopic hematuria, the best diagnosis is, well, you can see on the non-contrast scans, there's a mass. On the contrast scan, there's a hypervascular large tumor. Based on its vascularity, it's a renal cell. It's more likely a clear cell, which is typically over 100 Hounsfield units rather than papillary. So clear cell is the best answer. Could this be lymphoma? Theoretically, it's a possibility. Uh, that is indeed a possibility. Um, I put down metastatic disease to pancreas. I don't see METs in the pancreas. So it's a renal cell carcinoma. That's going to be the best answer. The differential diagnosis in this patient with abdominal pain is most likely. Well, lymphoma is a possibility, but I don't see any other nodes, but it could be. Carcinoid tumor can look like this, but they're typically vascular and have desmoplastic reaction. Adenocarcinoma is a possibility, but this is in the mesentery. Adeno typically is within the bowel. A mass that is solid, relatively hypovascular, though at times can have some vascularity, often doesn't have a desmoplastic reaction, is a desmoid tumor, and this indeed was a desmoid tumor. This is a hard case. I know lymphoma and carcinoids would be reasonable choices, so I give partial credit for those. Anyway, that's the end of February's quiz. I hope you got all the answers correct. More importantly, I hope you learned something. And with that, have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.